Hello there. In this video we will be testing my fourth attempt at recreating Iroquoian armor. Here I show off the panel to the camera showing how the armor flexes and lies naturally. Also the lacing up close. Here we see the setup. My first shot will be with a stone arrow. I miss. The arrow directly struck the panel. The head shattered into a great many pieces and part of the shaft was split. A close up of this is forthcoming. The butt of the arrowhead was driven through the arrow shaft. The tip of the arrowhead embedded itself in the panel. As my stone arrow was destroyed, I could do no further tests, and I switched to an antler arrow. Here the arrow struck a panel near one of the holes and split the panel lengthwise. Though the arrow did penetrate the armor, the armor did reduce the penetration by quite a bit. Seeing as how the bone split the wood, I decided to switch to steel to spare my armor. Another miss. This looks like it hit, but it didn't. This went through the stick that I have the armor perched on. Er. Bloody finally. The arrow struck a gap. It did not penetrate, however it did cut one cord. I would have been fine. Here the arrow struck a board directly. The board was partially split and penetration was reduced to about a half inch. Now I switch to a small bone knife. Because of the rapidity of the hand-to-hand -hand tests, I will not be narrating every blow. When you see me put up my thumb, that means that the armor succeeded in preventing penetration. After a number of very vigorous blows, I bent the tip off of my antler knife. Now I switch to a bronze dagger. Now my steel hunting knife. Here the knife struck a gap and penetrated effortlessly. The armor would not have saved me here. Again the knife struck a gap. It penetrated about two inches. Again, the knife struck a gap. The blade penetrated a little over an inch.
The knives only penetrated where they struck a gap. This proves to me that the light weight of the knives is not enough to split the wood. So how about a really big knife? The flexibility of the sword meant that it performed even worse than the knives did. So how about a flipping massive lance? The lance partially split the board and penetrated about an inch. Here it strikes a gap and penetrates several inches. I don't remember exactly what it did here, but whatever the, it did, it penetrated the armor by several inches and got badly stuck. The spear is a very efficient weapon for penetration. The spear itself weighs over six pounds. It's also a very efficient method of transferring my own weight into the target. Because of this, the armor performed very poorly against the spear. I'm curious as to how a stone spear blade would ha handle these tests. Now I test the armor against cuts. Knife first. The knife simply doesn't swing with enough force to pierce the armor. So let's try a much bigger knife. Even this great big knife doesn't swing with enough force to pierce the armor. Let's try a sword. The armor received no significant damage from any of these cuts. Now I try a period stone axe. The axe didn't cut through, it simply smashed the armor to pieces. Based on this, I didn't feel any need to try a second swing. Switch over to my tomahawk. The hatchet, which had been the bane of my previous armors, proved completely ineffectual against this improved version. Huzzah! After completing these tests, I realized that I'd done them wrong. The armor I've recreated here is depicted as being leg armor. The legs have a much higher degree of curvature than the flat side of my straw bale. This might affect the performance. So I made another example and tested it as well, this time wrapping it around a milk jug filled with water. The arrow glanced off the side of the armor. The armor prevented injury. Woohoo! A miss. In my defense, I had a very bad cold that day.
lousy birds are laughing at me. Finally, the board was partially split and the arrow penetrated maybe a quarter of an inch, just enough to nick the bottle. Interestingly, the arrow struck the weakest part of the board, one of the holes. The arrow struck the front board directly, split it lengthwise and penetrated the water bottle entirely. I don't know why, but I broke with my usual tradition of switching to my steel arrow here, and I switched to my knife instead. The idea here is to see how often the armor will deflect the knife blade. The milk jug proves too light now that it's been drained, so I have to hold it in place. This is not a good thing to do. As you can see, gapping is still a problem, however, a great deal of the knife blows are deflected off to the side. After deciding that the milk jug is inadequate, I wrap the armor around a bundle of straw, and I try it against my spear. This is interesting. The armor didn't so much deflect the spear as the spear deflected the armor. Again, a deflection. This is good. Here it strikes the gap made by the arrow and penetrates very deeply. As it struck sideways, it cut partially into the boards and became very firmly stuck. Deflect it again. Hey, hey. However, it did manage to snag one of the threads. Deflected, but not in a good way. Struck a gap, penetrated a little over an inch. Now I go back to my bow and my steel arrow, for whatever reason. The point of the arrow stuck in the wood. And because of the angle at which the arrow struck the armor, it snapped the arrow shaft off just below the head. In conclusion, when curved, this armor works much better.